So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Gail. And Gail suffered a traumatic brain injury, TBI, after a recent fall in the shower one week ago. The patient has been immobile since arriving at the hospital. The therapist notices that the patient's right hip mobility is gradually decreasing and has become painful with range of motion activities. Which of the following is the best course of action? So we have A, contact nursing about providing pain medication before therapy. B, increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on hip mobility. C, alert the physician immediately of suspected heterotopic ossification. And D, modify the treatment plan to emphasize out of bed activities. All right, so this is a mouthful, a lot of stuff for us to look at. I want to break down each part of it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. We had Gail suffered a traumatic brain injury after a recent fall in the shower one week ago. All right, so we got traumatic brain injury, and that's something to keep an eye on. All right, and we don't know much about what happened. We just know that she has a traumatic brain injury after this recent fall in the shower, and that was one week ago. All right, so pretty straightforward information here. As we move into the next sentence, it says the patient has been immobile, not moving since arriving at the hospital. Now, what does that mean to you? I really want to slow up because this is important. Patient had a TBI. We don't really know if the patient's in a coma or anything like that. We're not going to assume. We just know that the patient had a TBI one week ago and has been immobile since arriving at the hospital. Now, I already want you to really be thinking about, like, what does that really mean for this patient, the fact that they've been immobile? Some of y'all are saying atrophy, all right? Some of y'all are saying decreased range of motion, deleterious effects of bed rest, right? Potential of DVT and all that good stuff. Okay, so those are things that you want to be thinking about, yes, as we move through the rest of this question. Now, the rest of it says, the therapist notices that the patient's right hip mobility is gradually decreasing and has become more painful with range of motion activities. I want to slow up there as well because notice how it does say the patient's right hip mobility is gradually decreasing. All right, so now we're seeing that the right hip is not having as much range of motion and it's becoming more painful. Now, what's really interesting about this is notice how it didn't say anything about the the uh, the knee. It didn't say anything about the ankle. And most of all, it didn't say anything about the left hip. Nothing about the left lower extremity, just the right. So what is this already starting to mean to you? Patient has a TBI. They've been immobile in the hospital. Now we're starting to see decreasing range of motion. And when we're doing range of motion, it's becoming more painful. What are you starting to think of? Anything like kind of popping in your head right now? All right. Well, let's continue down. The last sentence, the question stem. It says, which of the following is the best course of action? So this is going to be an intervention. What do we do first? All right. So for those of you on the podcast, let's go through the answer choices one more time. A is contact nursing about providing pain medication before therapy. B is increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on hip mobility. C is alert the physician immediately of suspected heterotopic ossification. And D is modify the treatment plan to emphasize out of bed activities. All right, so looking at A, it says contact nursing about providing pain medication before therapy. When I look at this answer choice, I like the fact that we're providing pain medication before therapy. It makes sense because the patient is having pain with range of motion. I like that. I do, I do, I do. The, the part of it that I don't care for as much is it, that it says that the patient's right hip is gradually decreasing, her right hip mobility is gradually decreasing and it's becoming more painful with range of motion. And so it starts to make me question, why is the patient's hip gradually decreasing anyway? All right, it doesn't seem like it's directly related to the pain as if the pain's causing it to gradually release. It doesn't say anything along the lines of that. It's saying that these are two things that are happening, decreasing the mobility and the pain. And so if I have the nursing team just come in and give the patient more pain medication, 
yeah, it might allow me to do more range of motion activities, but maybe there's something underlying that's going on here. I still haven't addressed why the patient is having this decrease in mobility. And that's gradually decreasing. It just doesn't make sense. And, and here's another thought that's just coming to my mind right now, that it doesn't say anything about the left side decreasing as well. All right. So it's like, why is the right hip decreasing and not the left? I don't know. This is just weird. It really needs or really requires me to figure out, like, what is the reason why this is happening? Just giving the patient more pain medication, I don't think is the best approach. So I'm going to put an X next to it for now. But maybe it is the best answer. I don't know. I have to see what else is left. B says increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on hip mobility. Increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on hip mobility. Hmm. So we could do that. We could do that. And I like it because it's going after the mobility. It's not really addressing the pain at all, though, which is kind of weird. So here's the deal. You have your patient in front of you. They have whatever is causing their right hip to ha actually have a decreased uh, mobility over time, right? We're seeing that. And the patient also has pain with range of motion activities. Do we just increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on hip mobility? Is that the right approach? Because I would say, oof. well, if we increase the frequency of therapy sessions focusing on the hip mobility, what do y'all think is going to happen with the pain? Y'all think it's going to decrease? It's going to increase? It's going to stay the same? I, you know what? I would actually say it's going to increase. And the reason being is that the question says the patient has become even more painful with range of motion activities. They're becoming worse with that. So mm, do I want to increase the frequency of therapy sessions? Focusing on that? Probably not. It probably is going to make the pain worse. So I'll put an X next to that one. Let's look at C. C says alert the physician immediately of suspected heterotopic ossification. Interesting. So here's the one thing I need you all to write down right now or when you get to your destination. Make sure you write this down. That patients who have a TBI, TBI, they are very likely or highly likely to get heterotopic ossification. One of the major reasons is the fact that they uh, oftentimes are immobile because of the brain injury. All right. So that's one of the reasons why they start to develop heterotopic ossification. Not the full major reason there, but that's one of the major reasons why they develop it. Now, is this patient at risk for heterotopic ossification? Yes or no? The answer to that is yes. They had a TBI and they've been immobile. So that makes sense. OK, now let's continue down. The right hip is gradually decreasing. Well, heterotopic ossification, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this term, is the deposit, the deposition of bone into muscle or tendon, all right? Usually restricting joint and soft tissue mobility. Is my patient having decreased mobility? Yes or no, y'all? Yes. Okay, so everything right now is pointing to it. And pain is also associated with range of motion. Is that consistent with heterotopic ossification, y'all? It is. So right now, that's another piece of support for heterotopic ossification. Now, the one thing I will say that was brought up to me, which is a very good point, is heterotopic ossification usually develops a bit later. Um, you know, you'll see it a lot of times showing up on CT scans and that sort of deal at four to six weeks. When does it actually start to occur? Mm, can vary depending on the patient, all right? So the one thing I want you to also write down in your notes is that if ever there is a suspicion of heterotopic ossification, whether it's just the initial stages of it or whether you feel like it's been going on for a while, whatever you feel, it is your PT duty to report that directly to the physician immediately. That's a part of the protocol. So if you ever suspect heterotopic ossification, you need to alert the physician immediately about it. That's exactly what the answer says as well. I really like this one. I like it. Doesn't mean it's the best answer, but it's the best right now for sure. Let's look at D. D says modify the treatment plan to emphasize at out of bed activities. I, I don't really like this answer. And I don't like this answer because I don't know anything about the TBI. If you look at the first sentence, it says Gail suffered a TBI after a recent fall in the shower one week ago. 
And it also says the patient has been immobile since arriving at the hospital. Is the patient awake right now? Is the patient in a coma? Like what? I actually don't know any of that right now. So do we really want to modify the treatment plan to emphasize out of bed activities when we don't know the, this patient's current status? Are they even able to get out of bed? Is it even recommended that this patient get out of bed with their current condition? I have no idea. So for me to modify the treatment plan without that information, it's just not the best answer. Does that make sense, y'all? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put an X next to that one. Looking at all my answer choices right now, C's the best, C's the best, god darn answer. <laughs> all right, I've had people going back and forth. Some people saying C today. Some people is like, no, I don't think it's C because of heterotopic ossification. I want to tell you this, C is the best answer out of this bunch. All right, again, I don't want you all to get stuck, even on the MPTE, your practice exams, do not get stuck in that PT perfectionist mindset. Always looking for what is the perfect answer. That's not how to answer uh, standardized test questions on the MPTE. You can't do it that way. You have to focus on what is the best answer. Don't always look for what's the perfect answer because we may not have that. We may not have that. There may be a better answer in this situation for this particular patient. All right, maybe heterotopic ossification, you wouldn't expect it necessarily this early. But at the same time, what is the best answer given this question right here? Hands down, the answer is C. Again, looking for the best answer, not always that perfect answer. A lot of times you won't find one of those.